you always have to look over your shoulder. A lot of times you might feel uneasy if somebody's walking by you. You feel like you're always like on guard. To get a handle on what Gerbner means by the mean world syndrome, it's not enough to analyze individual TV programs or films or video games. The entire media context is what matters. How one kind of story or program blends into another to create and reinforce a distinct view and sense of the world. Getting to the heart of the mean world syndrome then requires taking a look at TV the way most of us experience it at home when we're not in classrooms thinking about these things by simply picking up the remote and doing a little channel surfing. When we do, with every change of the channel, we're likely to see the most banal content, alternating with the most bizarre and violent and frightening, so that what would be shocking in our real lives in the media world comes to seem normal and mundane, reinforcing the sense that the world is a place of constant danger and threat. I have to do what I can to protect myself and my children. And that's a fact of life, a way of life. What cultivation analysis has done is to show how these kinds of anxieties and insecurities are caught up explicitly with media culture, uncovering a direct correlation between the amount of television one watches and the level of fear one has of being victimized. If you look at it from a cultivation point of view, you see that the image of victimization, the image of risk, the image of danger, the conception that if there is so much violence in the world, I'm, I'm at risk. Not that I'm going to go down the street to be a mugger, but on the contrary, I'm afraid to go down the street at night. I'm afraid to go into the subways. I'm afraid uh, of strangers. I try to cross the street when I see somebody that I think may be dangerous to me. These are the, the consequences of exposure to violence that are cultivated in large communities over long periods of time. The finding that if you watch a lot of TV, you're likely to be more afraid of violence than those who watch less TV, may help explain why so many people seem to think violent crime is far worse than it actually is. A widespread misperception that started to be noticed a decade ago when crime rates began to drop. Here is the reality. Violent crime per capita actually dropped slightly in the latest figures released by the Justice Department. Nationwide, murder was down 5%. But the perception continues to dominate reality, triggering a fear that is out of sync with statistics, a fear that no one and no place is safe anymore. And when you're always on guard, it's hard to let go of fear, no matter what the reality. And this classic example of the mean world syndrome continues today. In fact, since that ABC News report about falling crime rates, Justice Department figures show that violent crime has dropped an additional 43% to a remarkable 30-year low. Anderson, the FBI says violent crime dropped 2.5% in 2008. Now, that includes an overall 4.4% decline in murders. But, but despite the steady drop, good. polls have consistently shown that most Americans believe just the opposite to be true that crime has actually been increasing. Three quarters of Americans say there is more crime in the United States than there was a year ago. Gallup's annual crime poll shows it's the highest level since the early 1990s. The poll also finds 51% of Americans say there is more crime in their local area than there was a year ago. The logical question is why? Why do fear and anxiety about violence seem to be rising even when the threat of violence is falling? Well, surveys consistently show that upwards of two-thirds of the people who believe crime to be a very serious personal problem say they get most of their news from television. This is the breakthrough of cultivation analysis, a clear correlation between the amount of media we consume and the degree of fear and anxiety we have about the world.